Greetings and felicitations, YouTube. You're all of the happy and way. Big news, 1.5 patch update is coming out tomorrow with the release of the Ajax and Diomedes DLC and the Hephaestus Free LC. And there's plenty to talk about for what's changing for multiplayer. First thing I want to talk about is what isn't there. And what isn't there is there is no fix for the Spear Stagger bug, which I've been talking about at length on my channel. Um, I'm only a little bit disappointed about this, as all it means in the end run is that a lot of the heavy and medium spear units in this game perform better than they should on paper. But, hey, that's something that they might be able to fix in the future. Um, changes that have been made that are going to be quite impactful involve chariots. Chariots and Cavalry will now no longer have um, their full speed in some instances when they are charging in difficult terrain. Um, it's been a little weird to have it happen, but occasionally you'll have moments where your chariots, which are in scrubs, don't put your chariots in scrubs, do do, all of a sudden have max charge and they're flying into their enemies even though there's a whole bunch of tree trucks in their way. Um, so that's been taken out. Another thing that they, they did with that as well, which is very significant, is that Chariots no longer have a bonus versus large. Um, this is this is actually pretty cool. A lot of people are excited about this. Um, I don't think it's going to be as impactful as some people might think. So a Heavy Chariot for uh, Vdaya has 84 damage um, on, on a 10 second stat block there, right? And the way that damage is calculated is, um, is like I said, it's over a 10 second time with a 5.5 second attack interval. And the bonus versus large on the heavy Thyan Chariot is, the bonus versus large is 10 points. Uh, so ultimately it means that their, their damage when attacking a large target increases from 84 to like 92 or 93. Um, no, I'm sorry, I got the arm. Uh, more like 102, 101, 102, something along those lines. Um, and ultimately, I don't think that that is that impactful. I think their damage and their value of chariots comes more from their, their speed, their mass, and their impact against infantry more so than their impact against cavalry. But I still think that with their damage that they have in the game that they're going to deal plenty against large units anyway. So, that's that's the that's my thoughts on cavalry right there. Um, some battle changes, ba balance changes for battles, which are are I think much more impactful for the game as a whole. Um, the base movement speed of archer type heroes has been reduced from forty five to forty two. As well, the movement speed bonus provided by the strafe ability has been reduced from thirty to twenty uh, percent. And the, um, the speed bonus provided from the Flights of Artemis ability has been reduced from 25 to 20%. So all of the Archer heroes in one way or another are going to be moving a little bit slower. Um, which I think is just more incentive to put your Archer hero on a Chariot, ultimately. Um, weapon switching will now, will now increase movement speed by uh, 50% instead of 20%. So we're going to see Light Spear Runners running a little bit slower. Um, I think that's just going to bring their speed down uh, from 66 to 60. Uh, I think this is what that's going to boil down to. Weapon switching will now increase the charge bonus by 16, which is down from 22. And the base damage is, uh, is now increased by 18, which is up from 10, but will no longer increase armor piercing damage. So more base damage done less speed less charge okay armor piercing damage for all archer units including mounting archers has been increased by roughly 7.5 percent meh uh some other people are excited about that i i mean it, it is going to mean that they're dealing more damage but um i'm i'm just i'm still don't think i don't i don't know 7.5 is a pretty big number it, it depends. It really depends. I'll, we'll have to see how that plays out. It could be really good. I'm I'm not expecting it to to change my mind about archers in this game. Um, the number of javelins carried by warriors of Ithaca has been reduced to three from four. This is this is good news. Uh, 
the Warriors of Ithaca were already really, really powerful, but this is a good reduction on that. Um, also, the Warriors of Ithaca have lost 5% of their melee attack. Also good news. Uh, Heavy Swordsman, I, which I believe is in the Mycenaean roster, has lost 5 points of armor. I don't think that was necessary, but hey, it's been done. Uh, they will now use light precursor javelins instead of normal precursor javelins, which just means that their base and armor piercing damage um, has been decreased by 20%, but their range has been increased by 15%. So, uh, Heavy Swordsman, I, I, I think this is going to turn into overall a performance nerf. Um, the damage on the javelins already wasn't all that good, so maybe the range will be helpful, but losing 20% of their damage, that, that worries me some. Renowned Kopesh Fighters will now use lighter javelins as well, lowering their base and armor piercing damage by 20%, increasing their range by 15%. And these these guys were, were obliterating chariots with those javelins, so this will probably impact that greatly. Armored Spearmen from the Mycenaean and Spartan roster should no longer have flanking defense One improved. No Spearmen, uh, which is in most of the Achaean rosters, have had their armor increased from 35 to 40. Okay. Laconian Militia have had their armor reduced from 35 to 30. Heavy two-handed uh, two handed units have had their speed increased by 5%. That's good because the you know, armored chargers, the heavy charging units, I almost never take them because their speed made it almost impossible to use them as chargers. So this uh, this extra speed buff might be useful. We'll have to look at numbers, though. I think this is just going to mean that, like, a, a unit that had a speed of 32 is now going to have a speed of 34. <laughs> right? I, I don't see it being all that impactful, maybe. Um, high tier sword units will now have a small bonus versus spear units. That is going to be good. <laughs> that is going to be very good, and I can't wait to see that. Um, this will this might actually help make up for some of the more elite spear units with that stagger bug. It might actually help rein that in a little bit. Um, Minotaur's Bull Rush ability will now also grant a 20% movement speed increase for its duration, and now I might actually use the Bull Rush ability if I need to just have my Minotaur escape. But, okay, this is the cool part. I love this. Here we go. There's, there's a huge list of these here, and I'm just going to try and go through all of them at once. Penthesilea's Labyrinth Infantry have had their cost in battles reduced from 840 to 790. Pentesilea's Stiganores have had their cost in custom battles reduced from 780 to 750. Pentesilea's Furies have had their cost reduced from 1600 to 1400. Pentesilea's Hippobacoi, cost reduced 1550 to 1350. Pentesilea's Anoreites, cost reduced from 1320 to 1180. Hippolyta's War Riders, cost reduced from 1000 to 900. Hippolyta's Hippoxito Hippotoxitoi, have had their cost reduced from 1350 to 1200. Hippolytus Toxoanaxis have had their cost reduced from 1450 to 1250. Hippolytus Andromachoi have had their armor increased from 35 to 45. I only got a couple more left here, so I'm going to get through them here. Um, Horsewomen have had their cost in custom battles reduced from 800 to 730. Dardini uh, okay, that that's... That's all the Amazon changes. And that's all huge news. Huge news. Whereas before, like, I'll just give an example. Whereas before I would take eight Labrys Infantry. Or, I'm sorry, if I were taking five Labrys Infantry, which I would often do. Um, we're now talking about me having saved 250 funds. Okay. Uh, 250 isn't a great number, but... We can also combine that with the fact that, let's say, I was taking um, two horsewomen, and the horsewomen costs have been reduced from 800 to 730. Okay, well, now I've just saved another 140. Um, so that's another 390 funds that I can swing with that I didn't have before. That's fantastic news. This next battle here was sent to me by Air Runner, and I would be following his hero very closely, but let me tell you, Air Runner spams out orders to that hero so frequently that the, the character overshouts me with things like, Understood! Yes! Going to battle! Just over and over and over again. It 
You'll hear him in the distance, I'm sure. It was... It, I couldn't hear myself think. So, back to the patch note updates. There's a, a couple of more um, balance changes here. Dardanian defenders have had their custom battle cost increased from 1,000 to 1,120. And fearless swordsmen have had their custom battle cost increased from 1,100 to 1,220. So, that's an additional 120 funds. If you were buy, bringing all six in a battle, we're talking at you having spent an additional 600 seven, uh, spending an additional 720 funds that's you know that's that's three dardanian mob and and then some that's that's more than half of a heavy trojan chariot this is a very significant change which is going to bring down the number of dardanian defenders and fearless swordsmen that we've been seeing in multiplayer battles almost certainly um, some other small changes. Um, a, a duplicate map was removed. Um, Trail of Taiki. The Fighter Ravager uh, should now have the correct cost for Hippolytus faction in custom battles. That wasn't something I had noticed before, but apparently it was uh, not spending its funds right. Ultimately, what we're looking at here, though, is a, a mass cost buff for the Amazonian factions. And... I'm a little uh, on the fence about it. I think I think it'll be nice that they cost cheaper, but I still don't think that they're worth the funds that that they now value them at. Um, for instance, horsewomen are are just not as cost effective as as um, savage centaur warriors. Savage centaur warriors costing 600 something funds, and horsewomen having cost 800 are now going to cost 730. Not so sure that that's going to make them better than those savage centaur warriors. The, the one Amazon stat change that I am excited about is that the um, uh, is the armor increase on some of, on one of um, Hippolyta's swordsman units and I'm also very excited to see what this um, this bonus versus spears is going to translate to for a lot of these sword units as well um, in future updates things that I am uh, hoping to see is I'm still hoping to see that the spear stagger bug like that the uh, like th that which the heavy trojan spearmen benefit from will, will go away um i'm also hoping to see some other uh minor performance things oh I, there was one in there that i did forget to mention that i think is really important and that is that the the sharpshooter ability uh for archer skirmisher and archer um trickster heroes will not be removed if you were to take a war horse or or horse mount, um, so that was something that I had noticed with uh, the Amazon archer heroes is that their ability to ignore the missile block chance of a of a shield was no longer was no longer there if you put them on a horse, uh, and that made it so that I never wanted to take a horse. Well, now the Archer Skirmisher heroes for the Amazon factions are going to have a lot more viability and maneuverability, and you'll be able to get a lot more value out of them. So that's all stuff I'm very excited about. Meanwhile, let's go ahead and let this Fighter Ravager hero on a, on a Javelin Chariot go ahead and just tell me what tell me what we think about uh, about the uh, the patch notes. Yeah. I'll sort it. Good. Got it covered. He just, it he just won't shut up. <laughs> Happy to. <laughs> Heard and understood. Right on it. No question. Alright, ta-ta. I love you all. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good one.